Hi, it's the 21st of uh, December today and here I am at the orchard. It's a very special day for me because uh, yesterday uh, was my last day at work and I'm actually uh, retiring. Um, although it doesn't mean I'll stop working, it doesn't even mean I won't do any doctoring anymore, but uh, I shall be claiming my pension at the age of 57, having paid 10% of my income into it since 1979. It is just enough to live on. And um, anyhow, that's another story. Uh, by the way, the world isn't going to end today because uh, people are expecting it and the Lord Jesus said that the world would end at a time when people weren't expecting it. Um, but anyway, having said that, um, uh, this is about hedging. I'm going to do a video about hedging today. I hope this um, head camera is, um, uh, is filming a bit better. Thanks for the suggestion of putting a laser pointer on it, but I haven't got one yet. Anyway, when we um, first bought this piece of land, and it would take me really an hour to really tell you all about the hedges, so I'm just going to show a little bit today. Um, but we planted hedgerows. Uh, what we did was we originally planted a large number of small plants, um, plants this sort of size, maybe. Um, we planted hawthorn, blackthorn, which is otherwise known as slow. We planted hazel. We planted wild rose, gelder rose. Um, field maple and various other odds and stuff, odds and ends. If you can see, there's a um, bird's nest up there. Uh, this hazel, this, this hedge is not truly, not truly mature, but we're working on it. A bit just back there, you can see uh, where that uh, there's a lot of debris here, which is being carried away. Hard work hedging, uh, ma maintaining and managing a hedge. Um, but you can see these st st um, stools or these, these trunks have been cut down and what, that one there has been split, cut through with a billhook probably or actually a saw. Billhook's the right tool but that's with a saw. Cut about um, two thirds, three quarters of the way through and then twisted round and laid down and that will live and that will send up shoots and it will, they'll be woven together and form a very strong hedge. I'll um, just wander down. Julia is doing some hedge working today uh, and um, our friend Michael um, is, uh, is here. He comes here and does some voluntary work for us uh, uh, for the exercise and being outdoors. It's a lot of work in hedging, isn't there, Michael? Yeah, but quite satisfying. Hmm. See, these are ones which have been cut and twisted in previous years. The hedges are all at different various ages. You can see there, uh, that, that's a big heavy branch was cut three quarters of the way through, taken down, loads of new shoots have come up there and, and this has lived, this has sent up lots of new shoots and it's all being woven in. This is I think a bit of elder, I'm not actually sure. Uh, we like to see a bit of uh, nature moving in and taking over, it's an old abandoned bird nest. We used to grow red currants, uh, um, but things we planted, we, this is, this is the, one of the double binds, one of the conundrums that you get caught in. So we planted a hedgerow, this brought in loads of blackbirds, they nested there, and then they ate all of our red currants, so we couldn't grow red currants. You see these have been managed in previous years, um, again, cut most of the way through, pulled down like that, and then they've grown, have sent new shoots up from the base, and uh, you see it's all weaving in, this is beginning to become mature. In the past, uh, this sort, this was a sort of, sort of stock boundary that you had. Obviously initially we had to put up this wire to keep rabbits and deer out. They were a very big problem. Frankly they're not a big problem now. Uh, we haven't had any deer in the orchard as far as we know for uh, a couple of years now. Um, the last deer that I know of in the orchard had a nasty accident. Um, but th this used to be the sort of stock fencing that was used because you could do it not for free uh, but just for getting the plants from the wild or raising them. I mean, for example, plants like uh, hawthorn, uh, they just seed up everywhere. You can easily get some hawthorn berries and, um, and, uh, and, and sow them and, and grow them all. You, you can just dig the plants up from all over. Uh, here you see a, a long established, very thorny, very prickly wild rose. And you get some beautiful flowers on these. Um, Again, that's a, I think that's a, a broken down old nest. Oh, I'll tell you what this is. Yeah, what we can see here, I think, yeah, this is interesting. Uh, yeah, I hope this isn't too disgusting, but this looks as if this is a load of hawthorn berry and stuff. Berries, probably a bird or a squirrel has been sitting there 
and nibbling it and perhaps that's um, come out of its lower end I'm not sure um, but anyway loads and loads of seed here there's another uh, nest there's another nest but these nests are all yeah again that's got loads of berries in the base of it you can see this what's happened here it won't really hard to disturb this now because obviously it's long, about, long abandoned yeah here's a bird's nest and here's loads it's a bird's been sitting in a nest in a hedgerow that we planted um, and living and feeding its young off of berries that we that have come from the hedgerow. Uh, unhappily, of course, this also attracts predators. And you know, we've had a cat, uh, a neighbour's cat, uh, which has come in here and um, uh, killed and eaten large numbers of uh, baby birds. E oh, that's the way it goes. So yeah, you, you can see what's going on roughly. This uh, uh, probably has been done this year. You see, that's been cut down and laid. This is laying hedges. These, is, these are not expertly done. It's quite possible that somebody is watching uh, and think, hey, that's not proper hedge work. That isn't really the way it should be done. Hey, I'm, <laughs> that's okay. You put your video up and link to it. Love, bless you, love you. Um, you know, but this is how we've done it. Now, obviously, this wouldn't stop sheep getting through. Um, but I, I did say it's not really totally proper hedge. You can, uh, you put uprights and hazel to weave in and out and you can, um, you can make these stock proof. What's that? Is that? An apple there, probably one I threw in. Um, yeah, you see that's been bit eaten by an animal. A squirrel probably has um, grabbed this apple and has gone up here and has been eating it. A um, lot of work uh, involved here. Um, and this, this stuff isn't really very useful for... Um, uh, you know, warming your house uh, because uh, it's all very, very small and fiddly and difficult to manage and uh, thorny, very thorny. Uh, so this is just basically wearing lots of gloves. This is all being dragged to somewhere where it can be piled up. This is a bit of wild privet. Uh, I don't like privet hedges much, but uh, this, is a, this is a wild native species. It's got little blackberries. It's quite attractive. Uh, white, white flowers and blackberries. It's quite attractive, as long as you don't have too much of it. But the, the main plant that's used in hedges is hawthorn and blackthorn. In my novel Darwin's Alice, I've written a little bit about hedging. You know, I've, I've woven a lot of stuff into it from my own experience of what I've learned at the orchard. Uh, but yeah, this sort of stuff would be used to, uh, to contain sheep. Uh, and other animals uh, in um, societies where uh, metal uh, fencing wasn't available. Down at this end, though, it's a bit different. We've got these um, poplars, it is windbreak, uh, populus robusta. This is a hybrid. So, a very rich neighbour over there has um, got lots of horses and a, oh, he's got, he's, he's a millionaire. I think. Hello, Julia, how are you doing? Yeah. My goodness, that is a large pile of uh, goodness. Oh, goodness. That's just the brushings. I'm picking out the big wood for firewood. When you say there. brashings, what does that mean? Uh, it's the small twiggy bits. Yeah. We're just going to burn. It's yeah. No use them. But they, the bigger bits of wood I've taken out and put in the pile there will cut the stuff for firewood. So. Yeah. I was just saying how you, you can uh, get the, uh, you can make use of the cuttings from a hedge for firewood, but there's a limit to how much trouble. Uh, well, you can go to. It, they'd bundle that up and make it um, dry it. They'd use that for bread ovens because you get a yeah. really hot, quick. Yeah. That's uh, yeah, if I had my way. Um, some of the people who are able-bodied people are being given free taxpayers' money because they can't get a job. We'd have them coming out here chopping this into short lengths and tying it up to dry to be used as faggots uh, to warm uh, the houses. But yeah, that's another matter. If you take a look through the hedge, that's where we put a lot of it. Oh my. There's a huge pile over there and yeah. there's another pile up the end. It just creates so much material. Oh yes. So basically, where are you going to burn that? Where are we going to burn it? Where it is, well, not, not in that huge yeah. I mean, if that was all burned there, uh, we've got some chestnut and hazel uh, light, uh, that would be, it would burn, but yeah. Are you going to burn this where it is? Yeah, and that's, mm. that's why I don't want that pile to be any bigger because it's quite easy to see. Yeah, fair comment. Because the bigger the pile you make, probably the better it'll dry out with the wind getting through it. I'll try and make it a high pile to dry out yeah. because everything's properly wet. This isn't ideal, is it? Because we've got this, um, they've got these hawthorn growing up in amongst these um, big um, poplars. Well, we put the hawthorn up here, but 
fallen in first. Yeah. And then we realised this particular corner was very windy, so yeah. we wanted some tall windbreak trees in it. So they've yeah. been planted since. So I'm just reducing the hawthorn down to be a small hedge around the yeah. slender top lip. Right. Okay. Well, uh, I'll put a bit more about hedging later, maybe. Uh, it's, it's an interesting old um, skill. And of course, you know, most of the work is done in the winter. Uh, of course, most hedges are now um, laid or managed by um, diesel driven flailing machines, which are horribly ugly but efficient. If you take a look at the road hedge, our road hedge, yeah. that's been dealt with in that way last week. Right. The outside edge of it and the lane. Yeah. It looks a mess. It's a bit. Things sticking out. Yeah, it's um, a bit like the AK-47 versus the, uh, the bolt-action rifle sort of thing. One of them is uh, the tool of a gentleman, perhaps the other the tool of a thug. Well, perhaps that's not a very good analogy. But yeah, the, the, the managing hedges by flailing them uh, with tractor-driven um, rotary flails is ugly uh, and messy, but it, it does actually work. And of course it saves on human labour. We can't have um, people doing this sort of work, can we? and that gets an exercise or some empathy with nature.